When you go grocery shopping to buy daily necessities, you buy eggs in sets of dozens, milk in liters, flyer in grams or kg, and so on. Notice that different things require different types of units. Not just this, you use different units to measure the same type of quantity. You don't use miles to measure a person's height, but use meters or feet. In the same way, in the case of atoms or molecules, the general units are not preferred because they are on a completely different scale compared to us, and even the smallest of units is huge to them. One of the things scientists use to avoid this problem is the relative mass, which is, by the way, today's topic. One can easily guess from the name that the relative mass of an atom is just a ratio of the weight of an atom and a standard value, and that standard value is 1 12th of a carbon 12 atom. At first, around 1850, hydrogen was used as the standard. But then scientists decided to use oxygen, as it reacted with so many compounds and was easily comparable. Things went awry when isotopes of oxygen were discovered, and suddenly there were two groups. One used oxygen-16, while the other one used oxygen-17 as standard, which created a lot of confusion. Finally, carbon-12 emerged as the solution. Although carbon-2 has three isotopes, carbon-12 has 98.93% abundance, which helped it win the vote. So, relative atomic masses of elements are a measure of how much heavy or light they are, compared to the mass of 1 12th of a carbon-12 atom. So, it can be written that the relative mass of an element is equal to the average mass of an atom of that element divided by 1 12th the mass of one carbon-12 atom. Notice that the relative mass has no unit. It is because relative mass is the comparison of two masses. You can also see that in the case of an element, the average of all the isotopes is used. Their relative abundance is also considered. Let's look at an example. The mass of one atom of carbon-12 is 1.9926 into 10 to the power minus 26 kg and the mass of one atom of sodium is 3.8175 into 10 to the power minus 26 kg. After dividing, we get the relative atomic mass of sodium, which is 22.99. Do you feel that using grams would be much simpler? Please rest assured. Although people do things when they are bored, this is not one of them. You will see the benefits once you know the uses of it. Unfortunately, it cannot be covered in one video, but there is a bit more in this one. You probably already know that isotopes are atoms with the same atomic number, but different mass numbers. So, relative isotopic mass is the relative mass of a particular isotope on the carbon-12 scale. For instance, the relative isotopic mass of hydrogen-1, hydrogen-2, and hydrogen-3 is 1, 2, and 3 respectively. In practice, the relative isotopic mass is determined first. Then the relative atomic mass is determined from the abundance information of the isotopes. It is because we can easily get information about their abundance and relative isotopic mass using a mass spectrometer. We will also speak about the mass spectrometer in some other videos, but there is also relative molecular mass, so let's check it out first. Likewise, the relative molecular mass is how much heavier a molecule of an element or compound is on the carbon-12 scale, but there is an even easier method of determining this. This is by adding up the relative atomic masses of the atoms present in that molecule. Let's look at an example. Take sodium hydrogen carbonate, the must-use ingredient for baking cakes and cookies, the baking soda. The relative atomic mass of sodium is 23, hydrogen 1, carbon 12, and oxygen 16. Baking soda contains one atom of each element and three atoms of oxygen. 
So after multiplying the relative masses with the number of atoms and then adding, we get the relative molecular mass, 84. Yeah, it's that simple. And math is so easy. That's it for today. You will see more uses of relative mass as you go. If you liked this video, check out our website, www.chemniverse.com, for more on this topic. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Until next time, take care.